<laughs> you like spiral out of control with a crippling dilly bar addiction. <laughs> I think I speak for everyone here when I say that there's nothing worse than grocery shopping, especially as a functioning adult. I swear to God, every single time you're like wandering on the store, weaving up and down the aisles, and you're looking for the peanut butter because everyone would think that the peanut butter would naturally go next to the jelly because peanut butter and jelly just go together and they should just be next to each other. You find out that somehow someone somewhere thought it was a good idea to put it on the other side of the store, way in the back. And so when you finally get there and you find it, you find that there's somebody in the way of you getting your favorite strawberry jam. So like every other functioning adult, instead of, you know, politely asking them to step aside so that you can scoop your container of jelly up. Excuse me. Can you get the hell out of my way, please? You instead grab some like mango habanero apple juice spread stuff off the shelf and you pretend to be interested in it, right? And, you know, carefully reading the label front to back until the other person moves and then once they're out of eyesight, you just jump in there, you grab it light and quick, and you get the hell out because that's just, it's just what you do, right? In just the same way, pretty much everyone I've met in life knows at least one person that has bought some sort of crashed or salvaged truck before. And just like when you're at the store, right, you all kind of secretly want to know what it's like to do that. I'm Dustin, Dusty.co Instagram, if that's your thing. And today we're going to be sitting down and having a quick chat about maybe you looking at picking up a wrecked vehicle, for example, and finding out, is buying a salvage truck worth it? Let's get it. Now, if this is your first custom offsets video, then hey, welcome. We're custom offsets. And if you guys are looking to get a new set of wheels and tires for your truck, we can probably help. Seriously though, we've got a ton of wheels in our warehouse ready to find their way to you and to their new home in as little as seven days with quick delivery. And we're talking some of your favorite brands here, right? Fuel, Nitto, TIS, Archon, and more. You can check all of that out by tapping the link down in the description or just go into customoffsets.com. Also, if you guys have a topic that you'd like us to cover in a future video, drop that down below as well. Drop me a comment. We'll see what we can do about making it happen. Now, trust me when I say that I get it. I understand the allure. I love Legos as much as the next guy and piecing together my dream truck piece by piece is it's pretty exciting. Plus, the lower price point of a salvage vehicle compared to the fair market value on some new trucks makes a wrecked vehicle seem relatively appealing. It's not all rainbows and unicorns, though, when it comes to a wrecked truck. Ask Cody Lawson here, right? We'll touch on that in just a little bit, by the way. Typically speaking, though, after a truck is involved in an accident of some sort, you know, an insurance claim is going to get filed. Now, the insurance company is going to do a couple things, like ask you some questions about the incident. They're going to file a ton of paperwork because that's what insurance companies do. And then ultimately, they're going to send out a claims adjustment or a person who's responsible for taking a look at your truck that you just crashed and assessing the value of the repairs and then assigning a value to all of that. Now, after the adjuster swings by to take a quick peek under the covers of your newly crashed vehicle, they're gonna compile a list of parts and then estimate the labor that it's gonna cost to get the vehicle back on the road again. After all, that's what you wanna do, right? You wanna know what it's gonna cost to fix it and then put it back on the road. If this value is more than the value of the vehicle as a whole, then they're gonna essentially claim the vehicle as a total loss, otherwise sometimes referred to on the street as just totaled. It's a complete loss. It's not worth fixing it, so it's done. Now, once a vehicle's been deemed totaled, the insurance company's gonna pay out the value of the vehicle in a running and driving condition to the owner, and then at that point, the insurance company now owns the wrecked truck. This is where it gets spicy. Now, the vehicle in question here no longer runs and drives, right? It's been crashed, so it's not much use to the insurance company as it sits. It's not like you can just take it out to meet the boys on a Friday night when all the airbags have gone off and the windshield is literally gone. You're gonna end up looking like Buford T. Justice and Smokey and the Bandit rolling down the road with like the top cut off and the wind blowing your hair. It's just not fun. Because of this, the insurance company is gonna send the vehicle to auction where they're gonna try and get the top dollar from it and make a few bucks back. Common insurance auctions include local auction yards or if you're into online shopping, there's websites like Copart. And because these vehicles are damaged, they sell for significantly less than their running and driving vehicle would on a dealership lot. With that being said though, there's a few things that you're gonna watch out for if you're looking at a salvage truck. For starters, things generally aren't always how they seem. Now, what we mean by that is depending on the extent of the damage, it can be extremely difficult to fully understand the extent of what's actually wrong with the vehicle under all the panels. We're talking things like bent frame rails, stuck suspension components, and overall just missing pieces and parts in general are just a few of the common issues that may be hidden behind body panels and trim pieces of your salvage truck. On top of this, there are actually guys out there who will buy salvage vehicles, fix them up just a little bit, right? Especially when it comes to cosmetics and then resell them on an auto auction in an effort to make a few bucks. 
They are the literal definition of putting lipstick on a pig in an effort to just pad the pocketbook a little bit. Now, not only is this downright frustrating, but it can also mean bad news bears for your wallet if you happen to get stuck with a truck like this. Another thing to keep in mind with auto auctions is that the price that you settle on when the gavel falls and the bidding stops is not the final price that you'll pay. Pretty much every auto auction that I've ever heard of in anywhere is going to have some sort of buyer's fee. This means that they're gonna take your total price that you agreed to pay the seller of the vehicle and then add a percentage on the top as a buyer's fee for their cut. Furthermore, if you think going to Disney World with your family is expensive because you have to pay for every little thing, then you definitely don't want to buy a salvage truck, right? You wanna pick your truck up, there's a gate fee, right? You gotta pay someone just to drive in onto the property. Do you need help finding your truck on the lot? Don't worry, they can do that too, but you're gonna pay somebody for that as well. Do you need to like borrow a big sledgehammer so you can beat the wheel of the truck back straight to get it on the trailer? It's a fee for that as well. Need help loading it? There's a fee for that. Wanna breathe their air while you're there? There's a fee for that too. Well, okay, maybe not, but Either way, the fact of the matter here is that by the time you're all said and done, the $4,000 F-150 EcoBoost that you know you were gonna buy to swap into your blown engine Bronco like Jared did is now north of $10,000 and you haven't even gotten it out of the gates yet. On top of that, unless you're gonna pick it up yourself and the truck maybe is local, right? You're gonna have to have it shipped, which can get really expensive as we know here in the new year. Now, once you get it home, right, you still have to tear it all apart. You still have to get a parts list compiled. You still have to source all the parts and pray you can get them. You still have to put it all back together. You have to paint it. Then you have to pray to dear God that every body panel and body line lines up, looks straight, and that you don't have any weird gaps on like the bedside because you know the frame's tweaked and the bed sits like this on the top and like that on the bottom. With all that being said though, it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to wrecked trucks. It definitely can be an adventure and you can also score a pretty good deal if you're not afraid to get your hands dirty and, you know, put in some time with a wrench. Because of this, it can be one of the most rewarding experiences of your life if you do it right. I know Lawson picked up his last truck wrecked and then they rebuilt the whole thing. They filmed a video on the entire process along the way and you know, while it had a few headaches and still had a couple of quirks, his truck did come out absolutely awesome and he had a quite a bit less invested into that truck overall than just buying one on the street. Now, if you're looking to buy a wrecked truck, there are a few things that we recommend, but the biggest one is gonna be that you talk to someone who's bought a vehicle from an auto auction before so that, you know, they could maybe give you some of the pointers, the things to watch out for and make sure that nobody's gonna take you for every dollar that's in your pocketbook. Would you guys buy a salvage truck? Let us know down in the comments section below. And remember that if you need a set of wheels and tires or maybe even a lift kit, right, for a salvage truck or for not a salvage truck, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna judge you either way. You can check that out at customoffsets.com. Peace.